Hello Stamperia friends, Antonis Zanidakis here and uh, we're going to work on a video today together for uh, Stamperia YouTube and of course I'm going to make a project, that beautiful book, with my magical uh, forest, magic forest collection. We're going to use uh, die cuts, we're going to use rabons and of course we're going to use uh, the beautiful paper pad 12 by 12. Okay, let's start. Uh, from this pad I'm going to use one paper, I already cut it. You will find the paper inside is uh, this beautiful paper with a, with a lady. So I just cut this part and I'm going to use this one uh, on my project. So let's start step by step and uh, let's see what we're going to make today together. First of all, let's start with the paper. I'm going to use craft glue from Stamperia to glue down the paper. Any, any kind of book you have, you just uh, choose any paper you like from the paper pad and you are going to cover uh, the front of the book, okay? It's not... I understand maybe you have a different kind of book, so... You pick any paper you like and just cover the front of your project. Now, something about the craft glue. It's a perfect glue, but... Uh, the reason I put a lot is not because I need to put a lot because it's not gonna stick. It's gonna stick even if I put a little bit, but uh, because I'm going to seal the paper with mixed media glue later, you have to add as much more glue as possible because you don't want to get bubbles later. And then you just go and apply the paper. Very nice. Oh, I think I put it upside down. Perfect. Very beautiful. And now I'm going to use my mixed media glue from Stamperia to seal the paper. It's very simple, just up and down moves. And we do two thin layers. And thin layer, we dry and then we go for a second. Very nice. And now we're going to dry very well. And uh, before we start doing anything on top of here and do all the pro the composition, the techniques, everything, we're going to paint all around just to finish with the, with the basics. And then we'll go and work on the front. Okay. So let me try this one. And then let's go and paint. For the spine, I'm going to use Coral Red Allegro from Stamperia. And I'm just going to paint just the spine and, of course, this part.
and I'm going to use Indian turquoise to paint around the pages. As you can see, we're already finished with the spine, we're already finished with the pages. And let's go to the back and I'm going to use nougat color from Stamperia again Allegro. Just put a little bit up here and then take your brush and just paint the back. And we're back. As you can see, already finished with nougat, the back of the book. We have the spine with color red. We have our beautiful paper, we seal it, and we have also with uh, Indian turquoise the pages. I'm not going to do anything inside. Uh, maybe we're going to decorate something special inside uh, in another video. But right now we're just gonna work outside of our book. So anything you have can be journal book, can be a notebook, a normal book, whatever, whatever you have, you can just work. It doesn't need to be this carton book or it can be wooden, you know, whatever you like, whatever you have at home, just go and recreate uh, this beautiful project. Okay, now what we're going to do, I'm going to clean my brass as always. And I'm going to use first ivory acrylic. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the acrylic down there. And then I'm taking my brush, but I don't take so much color. I kind of want just a little bit like to do this kind of dry brushing. I don't know if you can see it in the camera. I'm kind, kind of like dry brushing on top of the paper with the ivory. Kind to, you know, I want to give this this foggy look on my book. But I'm not gonna go everywhere. I'm gonna just focus here and I'm gonna leave this area without do nothing. And then at the same time, I'm gonna take also nougat. I'm gonna put some nougat down there. I'm going to dry a little bit, even though this is already dry because it wasn't much color. And then I'm gonna do the same with the nougat. On top, on top of my ivory. Be careful, don't use so much color. The point is to look like a dry brush. Doesn't matter if you go on the red, just play with the colors. I know you we cover also this paper, but doesn't really matter. And this is how it looks. The point is to cover here. I use this shape. I don't want to cover anywhere there. And then I'm gonna take also again a little bit from my ivory and I'm going to work like dry brushing around the book. Very nice. As you can see, if you do any mistake, if you put a lot of color, you just take baby wipe and you just take it off. But for now, just dry brushing, mostly around the corners here. 
around the edges. That's enough. Okay, and then we're going to dry and we're going to work again on the front. After we dry very well, let's go and work on the front cover. I'm going to use crackle paste, transparent. And the only thing I want, just take with my palette knife, just a little bit, here and there. I'm not going to cover everything. I'm going to add just a thin layer here and there. And this paste, when it dries, is going to dry clear and is going to crackle. Very nice. Now let's go and dry and we're back. And as you can see, we already dry. Again, it's a little bit milky in some areas because the crackle paste was thicker, but eventually it's going to dry clear. But you can see uh, the crackles. And of course we get, I don't know if, you, if on the, during like with the light, you can see all the texture I did. But anyway, you will start seeing when we start applying the colors and everything. So, after we dry, we take uh, the dye ink pad. This is the coffee. This is from Vicky Papayuano, another artist, collaborate uh, with Samberia. And we have also the blending tool. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my blending tool and the ink pad, the coffee. And I'm going to start blending on top of the paper and now slowly you will start seeing also the crackle and everything and as you can see I still work you know, pretty much in the area that we worked before with acrylics. Of course, you can go like if you want and you can add a little bit like, you know, around the edges. Just a little bit. But basically, I just worked here. And you can see now, this is the crackle paste. You can see here it crackles. You can see also here that crackles. But here is such a tiny amount of paste that it doesn't really uh, crackle but gives this nice texture. I mean, it crackles in some places. I don't know if you can see it in the camera. But anyway, this is what we get. We can get all the texture very beautiful. <clears throat> so after I do that, <clears throat> I'm going to use this stencil, this beautiful stencil from uh, this collection from Magic Forest. Uh, very happy with this stencil. And I'm going to use this time this uh, dye ink pads, they're water reactive. Uh, of course, when they when they dry, you know, after a while, they kind of get semi-permanent. But uh, for what I'm going to do here, I rather use uh, my permanent ink. So I'm going to use black permanent ink. And I'm going to use another another tool. And I'm going to work a little bit with the stencil. The only thing you have to do, just put the stencil straight. Take your per permanent ink and then just go through the stencil. Be careful so you don't move the stencil around. Like I did. But I can find the position again, I guess. So I put a little bit here, a little bit there, and it put also up there. And this is what we get. You can see very nice with the blending tool and the 
permanent black ink, we can get some kind of uh, nice beautiful texture with a stencil in the background. And now I'm going to take, I don't want this to be very like very vibrant. So I'm going to take a baby white and even though it's permanent, I still have some time to just go and kind of like work a little bit with my baby wipe and just make it even, you can see here the color, you can make it even more like uh, being in the background and then you're going to dry a little bit. And now I'm going to take another stencil from this collection and I'm going to take another uh, permanent black ink, but this time this is very juicy, it's new. Uh, you want to be juicy this time and I'm going to add this stencil like that here, pretty much. That's why you remember the, the shape I did with the colors and everything. As you can see, I use the same shape, right? So, and then I'm going to take my blending tool and this time with my juicy permanent ink I'm going to make this really, really, really black. Now, as you understand, you could use also uh, black acrylic and your sponge, you could use the, the, the black matte super base from Stamperia, you can use anything to give that uh, dark look on the stencil just the the blending tool is the most the most easy to do and this is what you get now this one we want to be uh, really black so that's why i use also my juicy uh, ink pad i always keep one juicy and one like a little bit faded so you can just do the difference you can see here like how it looks here and how it looks here anyway now we have to go and dry. And I'm going to take again the same stencil. I'm going to find the same position as before and I'm going to use my volume paste from Stamperia, very beautiful paste, I love I love this paste, this paste is amazing for texture, just, just I love it. Now, what are you gonna do? You're gonna put the stencil in the same position. Let me close the, the blending tools. And you are going to shift the stencil just to the bottom or To the, to the top, I mean, it's up to you. Me, I just shifted to the bottom. And then I'm going to take the uh, volume paste <clears throat> and go through the stencil like I do always. And you can see the result, how beautiful. This is the, we call it 3D stencil basically, because we give that nice black shadow underneath. And now with the paste on top, we shift a little bit of the stencil, and then you can see how nice and uh, like different it looks. So let's go and dry very well. And uh, then we're back. And after we dry the paste, I'm going to use for the background, uh, the robots from the Magic Forest collection. Uh, as you can see, both of them, they match the vibe. The thing is that I cannot even pick which design should I use. It's very hard. But uh, let's see, let's see what I can do. I'm gonna use this one first. And I'm going to cut with my scissors. And I'm going to place 
this one here. This is just for decoration to add some extra texture on our project. And then we just need to use the The good thing with the rub balls is that you, they can just stick everywhere, like whatever you have underneath, like stencil stamps, paints, glue, whatever it is, they always stick very nicely. And what I like to do always is that uh, after I put my rub on, I like to take my tool and I just go in and like distressing a little bit the the rub bone, like in some areas, just to look a little bit more vintage. Very nice, and uh, let's keep going. Let's keep going because we have a lot of beautiful elements. Now, this time, I'm going to use the, the rub bone DFLR B22. This is two different ones, but as you can understand, uh, you know, you're gonna have the leftovers, so you can just uh, use your favorite pieces from here that they match this project, and then the leftovers, you can just use them in another one. So it doesn't matter if we use two different uh, rabbons. And then I'm going to put this one right here. Very nice. Very beautiful. And let's see what else we can use here. I like a lot these brick pieces. Let's see if we can like just now we're gonna overlap the, the stencil here. Let's see what's gonna happen. As you can see, it works also on top of the stencil. This is just amazing. And I'm going to take another another wall, and I'm gonna place this on this part here, on top of the stencil. Why not? Right? That's very interesting. <laughs> It's very interesting that you can just place them wherever you want. Okay, I think that's enough for the rubble. So let me let me clean a little bit. Put this on the side and then let's go and continue with our background. Now what we're going to do, we're going to take the die cuts from this collection. Very beautiful die cuts if you open them. Let me, let me show you a little bit like what we have inside. Very nice, beautiful designs. Like we have the door. The door is so beautiful. We have the, the lady in two different designs. I think I'm going to use the big one, of course. We have the door that I can use, we have the castle, we have all these beautiful griffins can be used. The magic is in you, very nice. We have these beautiful uh, little tags. The forest is filled with magic and secrets. Always believe in magic. It's very, very beautiful. We have this beautiful column and, and these ones. And we have the little frame, the Baroque one, very, very beautiful. Oh, and we have a lot of like the hearts, other tags, and then we have keys, we have beautiful elements like this. 
for sure we're gonna use them, the Baroque elements. And we have also this one that says love, very nice. And also this one, I love this one. Anyway, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick the pieces I'm going to use and I'm going to use also dye ink pad. Uh, again from Vicky Papayoan, this is the black shadow. I'm taking my blending tool, I'm taking my pad and I'm going to give a very nice distressed look all around the edges. That blends so nicely. So let me do that and then I'm back so we can go and do the rest. And as you can see I have all my pieces done with the ink and now while I was doing that I thought uh, we can add something more in the project. So I cut, um, I take off from the paper pad, this is the cover, I got uh, this page and I have also a piece of chipboard. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my trimmer, cutter, guillotine, whatever you have, and I'm going to cut off the wooden pieces, strips. So we have one, we have two, and if I go from the other side, we have one more. So we have these three wooden pieces, wooden strips, and what we are going to do, we are going to stick them down on the chipboard using, of course, craft glue. Very easy. Now you can see that these ones are bigger than the chipboards. If you have a big chipboard, 12 by 12, you're gonna fit the whole thing. But me, I'm going to just cut here. And basically I'm gonna do the same for all the pieces. So that's why I'm gonna just take them here line them up and just cut there if you have 12 by 12 chipboard you can just fill the whole uh, strip and what i'm gonna do i'm gonna just put a little bit of glue at the back very nicely and then i'm gonna stick this down here and then i'm gonna take the other one And I'm, I'm gonna stick it, I'm gonna glue it next to it, but I'm gonna just let just a little gap between the between the strips. Now, something is very important you have to know is that you have to be very sure that you stick this down straight. That's very, very, very important. Like this. And then we're going to cut again with our uh, trimmer or scissors, guillotine, whatever uh, it works for you. And we have the three strips on top of the chipboard. Okay, let's cut. And then uh, we're back. As you can see, already cut the three stripes, wooden stripes, with the chipboard at the back. And now I'm going to use again my dye ink, the black, and I'm going to distress them a little bit because, you know, I just want to hide the. The chipboard is going to look much better if they have a little black. Very nice. And now let's go and do our composition. So I'm going to start with these pieces. I know I want to place them down here. Now the composition, we're going to do it together step by step. 
I'm gonna cut this part and then I'm gonna use the other one pretty much here. And I'm going to use craft glue to stick all the pieces down. Of course, you understand that doing mixed media, we are going to cover a few of the things we have done. Like the stencil, for example, is going to be covered, not the whole of it. But, uh, you know, just part of it is normal when you do mixed media. And then I'm going to work with my pieces. I think the door maybe is too much. I'm not sure about the door, but I know that I can just like start with. with a castle. Now with the castle I will go straight on these pieces, but uh, now the lady is going to be somewhere there, for example. I'm going to use at the back some foam tape. It's very important when you do a composition and you are going to use a lot of elements. It's good when, uh, especially papers and, and die cuts, it's good if you uh, use foam tape to elevate the things because they always look much better. So you see now it's kind of separates from, from the rest. And I know I'm going to use this griffin here, but again, I'm going to use foam tape at the back. And then I'm going to put the magic is in you again here, but again with foam tape. Foam tape is very important, or you can use chibo. You can. Uh, you can use chipboard cut some pieces off like this very nice and then let's stick that on the lady I mean I just love this collection guys the designs oh my god anyway so and uh, what I know is that I want to use this one now this one I want to use it under the lady here so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna just put some blue there and then put this piece like this I will because I can see I don't have enough space so probably I'm gonna take off You can hear also in, a, in the video, my friend, he came, you know, we have a lot of cats here in Greece and I have pretty much around my house like 20 cats and we have one specific cat that she likes to come and sit with us inside. So let me use also this one here. Okay, so what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a second layer, so I'm going to add this one here and I'm going to take my lady and I'm going to add a second layer. I want the lady to be more up than the rest, so I'm kind of like adding a second layer 
So when the lady sits there, and then we have very beautiful. So look what I'm doing now, because maybe you are confused a little bit. I add a second layer of foam tape on my lady, but I'm going to add the third one on that side here, because as you can see, adding this here, that sits on top of here, but then we need another one so it can touch there. Okay, so something like this. When it sticks, of course, it's going to look much better. And I think I'm going to add the heart down there. The heart can go flat. It can go flat on top of the castle. Very nice. It's all about puzzle. I put the piece down and just figure out the the position and the layers. There's so many things you can add to make this look very nice. And you keep adding You add some things with glue, you add some things with uh, foam tape, depends in what level. You want the things to be.
and you can keep going but just the point is to like at some point you have to find some balance and like stop but as soon as you put all the things together as you can see I add a lot of things but I put them all together I don't spread them around I just still want to have some space on my project it's very important for the composition you always when you use a lot of things just use them all together it's not any point go and adding things in another uh, in another spot I could just use some leaves as well, but I don't think it's necessary. Maybe some smaller ones, but I'm not sure if they're gonna look nice overall. And especially on her head when, you know, I'm not sure I'm gonna use uh, leaves. You could just play with leaves. You can do actually whatever you want, but uh, I just feel that that's enough for me. Yeah, I feel like adding one more piece, just make it look interesting. So I'm going to just add this piece under here. I think just give better balance. So uh, this is our composition. I think it's very beautiful. Hopefully you like it. You can see everything, very details and very important, as you can see here, uh, layers, layers. Don't forget the layers when everything comes like uh, with layers, always looks better. Let me add a little, a little piece under here to make it a little bit better balance. Perfect. Very nice. So. Let me clean a little bit the area and then let's continue with other things we have to do on the project. We're clean and neat and tight and now I'm going to work a little bit on my uh, round book. So we have to make look everything a little bit more vintage. So first of all, I'm going to use the aqua color from Stamberia. This is the leather and I'm going to spray. Let's start from the side. So I'm going to spray all over and then I'm going to take like a like a baby wipe and just tap a little bit off from different areas and then I start drying this dries permanent so that's gonna give very nice uh, vintage look I'm gonna do that all over. As you can see, the result totally changed. So I'm going to dry and I'm back. You can see that I already dry, very beautiful result. And you can see with the dry brush in the white how nice uh, the color reacts differently in different colors. So you can have this nice. Uh, look that's why i did uh, the dry brush before of course you could go on top but now just look more vintage now let's work on the spine with the same way i'm going to spray uh, my color and then i start drying now we're going to do this together because i want to show you how how you dry Basically, you want to go and dry pretty much everything, but you have to 
we we'll clean a little bit because we get at the back. So as you can see, you pretty much go and dry everything. It's dry, but still I have some wet spots and what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove the color and you can see I get very 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 nice and beautiful texture and now let's go and work also a little bit here same way of course with a baby wipe I can go and clean from my cover And the same idea also here, I will remove some of the color and you can see how beautiful and nice the result is. And now let's go and work at the back. I think the best way is just put this here like this. You can see I made a mess already, but we still can work. Let me clean also the, the table a little bit. I have made a mess. This spray literally like make a mess all over, but it's just a very beautiful product. You can do very nice techniques. So I'm going to just clean a little bit. And then I'm going again here to use... Sorry for the sound. I'm going to use my permanent ink. Uh, the black and I'm going to use also this stencil as we did in the front and with my blending tool I'm going to add that stencil all around It's going to give this nice, like a wallpaper look. That's a very beautiful stencil for backgrounds. As you can see, I got some like spots. I haven't put it everywhere, so it looks more distressed. And now I'm gonna dry a little bit, and then I'm gonna spray again uh, as I did with the rest. So I'm gonna keep that flat because it's very important the project to be flat. I'm gonna try to stay flat and I spray. That's why it was very important the, the, the stencil underneath uh, to be with uh, permanent ink. So when I go and add the color and I go wipe off, it's not gonna change uh, anything. And I'm going to take some kitchen roll towel and I'm going to clean my surface. And I just get, got this nice uh, vintage look and having the stencil coming through uh, the background. Very nice. Uh, I mean, we're done for me. Uh, of course, you you could just take uh, you know some gold wax and just go around the corners and add a little bit like shiny me. I, I, we're gonna do shiny things. So we're gonna do more videos. I'm gonna do more videos for Santa Maria and the YouTube channel, um, and I'm going to use different things. But today I, I think that's enough. I'm not going to add anything on top of that. I really like the result. Very simple, very easy. Few products and uh, you can make just amazing beautiful uh, things if you find something like that then you can decorate also inside and then you can put some uh, like chocolates and things and you can give that as a present uh, 
you know, when you go on Christmas or, or birthdays, wherever, wherever, or you can just keep it as a beautiful decoration uh, for your studio. So this is it for me. Uh, the first project online YouTube uh, with Stamperia. Very happy. Uh, this is the magic is in you. Hopefully you enjoyed. We learned some things. Antonis Anidakis, peace out. See you very soon. Don't forget, if you want to see more in general, like my art, just don't forget to follow me on Instagram uh, with my name, Andonis Janidakis, all together. And um, yeah, let's have some fun. Enjoy, have a good day, peace out, and uh, see you soon.